What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. You know, when you think about the early to mid '80s, it was definitely a generational shift in the sports. Um, in boxing, you had a young phenom named Mike Tyson burst upon the scene in 1985. Only 18 years old when he turned pro. And in less than two years, he would become the youngest heavyweight champion in the sports history. In the entertainment field, you had Michael Jackson, who, since he was a five-year-old kid, had been entertaining uh, crowds and audiences as part, a breakaway part, uh, a huge part, but as part of a group, the Jackson Five. But by the late 70s, he became a solo act with a very, very respectable solo debut off the wall, but it was his debut in Thriller with a redesigned look, eh, a redesigned face, where he transported from stardom to superstardom and icon uh, levels. And then you had Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was a respected college player, part of Dean Smith's North Carolina Tar Heels team in the early 80s. But hidden in that uh, team concept uh, of play, hidden was a superstar who burst upon the scene in, in 1984 with a gravity-defying game the likes of which we haven't seen before and really since. Not to that extent. Um, I think the biggest appeal to Mike, the baggy shorts was there, you know, later on the shaved head when imminent genetics and balding took place, the, the, the tongue hanging out, all of that. Yeah, you know, all of that was great, but it was the dunks. It was the gravity-defying hang time that really uh, stood out. The fact that he was able to hang in the air for damn near a second in his prime, hang in the air for a second, was ridiculous. To have a, re a reported 48-inch vertical leap, now some people say that that was overblown, it really was around 40 inches. i tell you this, I've seen... Michael Jordan um, from 1990 onward and even when he was older from looking at Michael Jordan I would say from 95 to 98 I would say even then his vertical leap was like 38 to 40 inches so yeah I could definitely see in his prime his vertical leap being something around 47 to 48 inches but he gave a secret to how he was able to jump so high, at least from his perspective. And I'll put a link to this article in the pinned comment in the comment section below. Um, Jordan had this to say about his vertical leap and where it came from. I really don't understand the physics of jumping and how you increase that. The things that I can say I did when I was a kid to improve my jumping was very basic things. I used to ride the bicycle a lot. I used to work on jumping. I used to just try to jump and try to dunk. And I guess if you exercise that muscle to that activity, somehow it's going to improve. So that's pretty simple. He just worked on jumping. He exercised the muscles that um, go into that. I'm pretty sure genetics played a huge part in it. Um, you know, but I do believe that if you work on something, repetitive, repetitiveness or repetition, I guess is the right term to use, will play a factor in you beginning better. So I think whatever you do, you, you work at it time and time again, you will see improvements. Um, because whatever it was, it seemingly worked for him because, um, his leaping ability. The thing that gets me is there, there are players that, from a, when you look at them, they seem to get higher in the air, 
Although people got to realize that Jordan was only 6'5". You know, and uh, when you have a guy that's 6'11", and he has a 40-something vertical lead, yeah, his head's going to be above the rim, much farther above the rim. Um, but what got me with Jordan was the hang time. How when he would jump in the air, other people would jump, but then come back down. And then he would stay in the air and then gradually come down. That's something that I've never seen anybody else do to that extent. Nobody. Um, not like that. So, um, whatever it was, man, it, it, it was, I think it was, whatever genetic gifts he had, he amplified them through hard work and, and, um, and repetition. But anyway, tell me what you guys think.